Welcome. This is Bert Doman, December 4th, with a Chart Guru. Let's take a look today at the S&P 500 index and uh, the QQQ, which is the ETF for the NASDAQ 100. The uh, S&P 500 is the candlestick chart right here, all these vertical bars. That's the S&P 500. The uh, QQQ is the uh, fuchsia colored line right here. And... Uh, it has been outperforming the S&P. If we can uh, look at the beginning here, this is May of this year. They started uh, at the same place, zero. And then we can see how they really marched upward until uh, August uh, at about the same pace. And this is where the QQQ started to outperform. And you can see here how the outperformance grew. The distances between these two indices grew as well. And here now, this is... A big big difference here uh, right now uh, that is uh, getting to be very toppy usually when you see the performance of these two indices diverge this much it's uh, very much like uh, late 1999 uh, which of course preceded the 2000 the year 2000 market crash uh, let's uh, take a look at uh, some uh, two simple indicators that you could use in order not to worry day after day about the hundreds of uh, economic statistics that are released, the tapering of the Fed, uh, the uh, battles in Washington, the uh, Health Care Act, etc. Uh, you can use these uh, two special moving averages, which we display all the time in our Wellington letter, and uh, as long as they don't cross over, you would stay invested in the S&P 500. You can see here, even during these uh, corrections here, as we had from May to June, they didn't cross over and you would have stayed uh, with the S&P 500 index. And here uh, in September, they got pretty close, but they didn't cross over. So you still would have stayed in there. You would not have listened to the news. You would have not have uh, read about the media. You just would have followed these two lines to see if they cross over or not. So they would have kept you in. That would have been for long-term investors. Now, shorter-term investors might not want to stay through a pullback like this. This was actually a thousand-point drop on the Dow Jones Industrials in one month time. Uh, so the shorter-term uh, oriented uh, trader would follow signals generated by our special stochastic. And here would have been the uh, sell signal when they cross over, and that would have been about right here. Then here's a renewed buy signal at the bottom, which would come right in here, etc. Here's a sell signal for this decline. Here's a buy signal for this rise. Another sell signal right here, a buy signal. And so you would have been able to uh, be out during uh, most of these declines, and you would have been in uh, during uh, most of the rises. And uh, that is, of course, the way to make money if you're an active investor. Uh, right about here on October 9th, we uh, started writing in the Wellington letter uh, that the NASDAQ 100 and the small caps would outperform uh, the big cap stocks going into year end. And in fact, that in December, we could see something approaching what we call a run for the roses, which will, would be a very speculative rally fueled by the massive uh, money creation of the Federal Reserve. There would not be uh, fundamentals behind it. And in fact, many of the stocks that have price earnings ratios of over a thousand, and there are a number of them, they would probably have the biggest gains as everybody just has to get in into the market uh, and close their eyes because of the uh, euphorious valuation levels and just buy because stocks are going up. That's usually not a good reason to buy. But uh, money managers often are forced to uh, get into it, especially at year-end, because they want their year-end statements to look good. What you also have in December is the, uh, the big hedge funds, they shed their losers, which uh, this year, of course, includes the precious metals, mining stocks. They've been the big losers. And they focus on the winners because they want to show that they had the winners uh, in their year-end uh, statements uh, to their clients. In January, that often reverses and you get the opposite effect. Okay, that's all for now. Uh, stay tuned. Uh, the markets are going to get very exciting here over the next uh, six to eight weeks. And you really want to have the best guidance available to you. We've been doing this for over 40 years in the markets. And, uh, you know, you're bound to learn something in 40 years time. Uh, and we've, we've seen it all. A lot of this is pattern recognition. And, you know, the markets don't necessarily... 
uh, replicate what they've done in the past, but they certainly rhyme. Uh, this is Bert Doman signing off for today.